It's a hundred degree day in the middle of a scorching Florida summer. I'm sitting in a comfy armchair, right smack in the middle of a beautifully decorated, air-conditioned apartment clubhouse where the residents congregate to play pool and watch football. I'm checking Facebook and texting my friends to make plans for the evening, and every few seconds my eyes flick to the big clock on the wall in front of me. It's been three hours, I think to myself. Hope they're okay out there. Outside, 60 fellow college students, all of whom I hired within the last couple weeks, are scrubbing their way through hundreds of empty apartments, attempting to rid them of the filth left behind by the previous tenants. An incredibly tough job, especially when some of those tenants were frat guys and roaches who lived there for years without ever so much as lifting a toilet brush. Doubly tough when the AC units are down for maintenance and your novice boss doesn't even think to offer you a water break. I contemplate checking on them, but talk myself out of it. They had to have known what they were getting themselves into with a cleaning job, and anyway, they only have to do it for three weeks. Plus, I told them if they needed me, I'd be in the clubhouse. I prop up my feet, put in my earbuds, and tell myself I have it all under control. As you might have guessed, it doesn't take long for things to go south. Like, way south. Hours later, I'm still perched in my armchair, congratulating myself on how well the day is going so far. We're more than halfway through, and no one has run into a single problem yet. Well, no one has told me about any problems, at least. As I'm about to take the first bite of the Caesar salad I just had delivered, the clubhouse doors swing open, and my employees suddenly start shuffling through single file. It's not just a few of them. As I watch, fork halfway to my mouth, 45 out of 60 of them crowd into the room. For a split second, I think they're finished cleaning which would be surprising, considering the amount of work I assigned them this morning, until I catch sight of their faces. As they spot me, freshly showered, with my hair done and makeup meticulously applied, every single one of them scowls. Yeesh, why so serious? Hey guys, how's it going? I asked cheerfully, trying to lighten the mood. Silence. As they continue to make their way toward me, I can't help but cringe a little. They're all dripping in sweat. There are huge black grease marks on their arms and faces from scrubbing ovens and who knows what else, and they smell like a gross combo of body odor and moldy refrigerator. Bet you can't wait to shower, I joke awkwardly, desperate for just one of them to crack a smile. More silence. What is going on? Suddenly, they start whispering to one another, and they begin nudging one person forward. I hear someone say something that sounds like, do it. Little do I know that I am about to experience the most humiliating 30 seconds of my life. Slowly, one steps in front of the group, and then, carefully avoiding eye contact with me, she says, We quit. I almost dropped my fork. Wait, what? Before I can even think of a response, all 45 of them turn around at exactly the same moment and begin to make their way out the big double glass doors, dragging their vacuums, buckets, and sponges with them. 45 people quit. At the same time, 75% of my team. That's the moment that inspired my obsession with learning how to be a better leader. I had no idea what I was in for when I started a cleaning company that hires only students while I was still in college. I, a millennial with hardly any leadership experience, decided I would hire other millennials, a notoriously tough group to work with and retain, to do back-breaking, dirty, physical labor that would include cleaning filthy toilets and scouring mildewy bathtubs. Somehow, I thought it would be easy. Ha. It was anything but easy. I didn't know the first thing about building a business, let alone one that's part of an industry as unenticing as house cleaning. The day 45 people walked out on me foreshadowed the many trials I'd face as a leader, which would only get more and more difficult. But with time, patience, and a lot of screwing up, I eventually learned how to overcome the challenges I had unwittingly taken on. This is the true and perfect story of how I went from that humiliating summer day to where I am now. It's about how I built a company where people want to be and where millennials are loyal, productive, and empowered, even as they do someone else's dirty work. But before we get to all that, let's back up a bit, to the beginning. I need to explain how I ended up in that clubhouse in the first place. You see, it was never even my intention to start a company. 